Now let's go ahead and talk about associated types in Swift language. Consider an example that I have a couple of different structs. So I have a codable struct over here, which is title, and I have another struct for a user, which is also codable. Okay, that's fine. And I will also have a web service protocol. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a web service protocol. This will only be applied to the classes. And it has a particular function, let's say get all. You will pass in the URL of the service and in the completion, we are going to say result of, well, of something, right? And the error. Now the problem over here is that result of what? Because sometimes we want this result type to be of a movie, but the other time we want the result to be of type user. But how can we even do that? This is where the associated types come into play. So we can simply create an associated type and call it model. We can pass in over here a model. Now associated types are created in the protocol. So that's why you can see that I am declaring it inside the protocol. Now, whoever is using this protocol can declare, can create that particular associated type. So this means that I can go ahead and create a movie service, which is a web service protocol. Web service, I'm not sure why it's not uh, coming up over here. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Protocol, I think it should come up over here. It is a class. Okay, so we have the web service protocol over here and we need to tell the movie service that what will be the model type. So now the responsibility is on the movie service to say that what will be the type alias. So I can go ahead and say type alias will be the movie. And now I can go ahead and implement, you know, that particular type over here. So model is movie. And I think movie is something that we have already declared. And now I can simply change this to, it will be movie, all right, or whatever the model is. I guess in this case, the model will be movie and error, okay? But in this case, uh, we might be interested in returning an array or something, so that is also fine, okay? And we are going to see that if I'm doing it correctly, let's go ahead and make sure that the result is wrapped up correctly. There we go. And now I can go ahead and try to implement these things. Okay. Now, a couple of issues over here. We are saying that we are going to be returning get all, right? So it has to be an array of models. So let's go ahead and do that. Also change it to array of model. And apart from that, let's go ahead and uh, compile it over here. I don't think it likes the class part, so let's remove that part. Okay, so it's saying the generic type specialized with too few parameters, got one, but expected two. I think we forgot the error. So this is common problem, that sometimes you just place the caret at the wrong place. There we go. So what has happened is now we have this web service protocol it has the associated type, it has the get all, which is a function, but the caller can change the associated type. Caller can say that, oh, the model that is going to be used will be the movie or the model will be user. So if I want to create a user service, I can actually do that. I can say user service, which will be a web service protocol, but in this case, the type alias for the model will be different. It will be user. And now I can copy the same function and apply it over here also with the model, which in this case will be user. So this is the associated type. Associated type allows you to set the type in the protocol. That type can be set from the concrete classes like the movie service or the user service. Okay, so this is the important part and this is the associated type in the Swift language.